Okay, uh, so welcome to our third lab. So in this lab, we will uh, try to practice uh, the list and also the set. So those are two data containers uh, in Python. So first in AWS console, so let's open Cloud9. And that is a Python editor. Uh, so if you stopped the Python editor, like if you haven't used that one for more than 30 minutes, so that Cloud9 instance will be stopped. So uh, it will take a few minutes uh, to restart. All right, uh, so now you can, you can see uh, it is ready. So um, first, let's go to the, our local repository. So that is this folder. So that is I241. So let's type CD I241. And uh, before we start, we want to update our local repository so that we have the same version as uh, in the GitHub repository. So the command is git pull. And now you can see our local repository is up to date, which is great. And let's create a new Python file. So let's right click the local repository folder and create a new file. And let's call it lab3.py. And if we double click, so now we have a new Python file being created. Uh, let's write some uh, command so that lab3 for list and set. OK, so this is the original command. All right, uh, so let's try our questions. So um, those are on the instructions. So our first one, 3.1, is asking that can we create a variable which contain which is a list. So let's say uh, the variable name is string list, and the values are just several letters. So the first one is a. The second item is D, so letter D, and they are all separated by the comma, and E, and B, and C. All right, so now we have this list, and we can try to print it. So this is our string list. And now you can see in this output, so we do have this string list. Uh, so can we sort this list? So, and yes. So if you remember that um, for string or for the list, there is a built-in method that is called sort. So list dot sort. Okay. So this method does not take any input. So, and after that, let's print this sorted list and we can see the difference. So here we can see our second output is the result after the sort method so that we can see all the items because we have all the letters. So they are all sorted alphabetically. OK, so which is nice. Um, so let's move on to 3.2. So this one asking that can we add a new letter F uh, to this string list and Yes, so for list, we do have a method called append. OK, and so let's see the, by using this append method, so we can append this F into our list and let's print this list. And now you can see, OK, so F has now just been added to this um, to this list. Um, there are several ways to do that. For example, you can also use the extend or if you, you can also use the plus uh, function. So you can plus two lists together. Um, but here I just use one uh, one of those methods. So here I just use this append. 3.3 uh, is that so we want to remove uh, the letter D. So from this list. So the letter D from this list. Uh, so again, there are several ways, but in this case, we can use the remove method of the list. So string list dot remove, and we can put 
item that we want to remove and let's print this list again and write and now you can see in the latest output so the letter D has been removed okay um, our next question is asking that uh, so can we print the letter C from this list so we just want to print the letter C uh, by using the index. If you remember that the index is the position of the item in a list or in other data containers, uh, so the index always started from zero if we if we from the left. So so the index of A is zero, B the index of B is one, and index of C is number two. Okay, so let's say print str list and the index of c actually is 2. Okay, so we got c. Uh, if we want to start from the right to left, so the index of the last one is negative 1 and negative 2, and in that case, uh, it will be negative 3. So if you want from the right to left, so we can also use negative 3. Okay. So it will give you the same result. So it doesn't matter which one you are using. So, um, but normally I would prefer use the positive index. All right. Uh, so next we're going to create a list. We call it my list equals. So there are several items. So you can pause uh, the video here and also type all the items in the list. Okay. So here we have this uh, list. So we have uh, string A, which is lowercase. And this one is actually a string one to three because that is declared by a pair of this uh, quotation mark. So this will be a string. And this is a number. So that is the integer. And let it be in lowercase, let it be in uppercase. And this is a false that uh, with a pair of the quotation mark. And this is also false, but without quotation mark. So this is a keyword that in Python. So this is a Boolean data. And we also have another one, two, three. So that is also integer. Uh, we have none. So this one does not have any quotation mark. So that means this is also a keyword. Uh, otherwise, you will have error. So this is a keyword that is, that is a special data type. And we have uh, the string now. So now let's print. Uh, my list okay so uh, you can see we have uh, this list and if we want to check how many items in this list and we can use the length function so length function is a built-in function so we can use len and again we put my list within the premises of the length function and we put uh, this entire part within this uh, print function. So now if we write, we know there are 10 items in this list. Okay, 10 items in this list. Uh, so however, this question is asking that how many unique items on this list? And we know that within the list, you can have duplicate items. So that's why that actually we have this identical one, two, three, and also one, two, three. So how can we get a number of unique items? And this is where uh, I will use the set data container. So I will convert this one into a set object. And because in set data container, all the items must be unique. So let's say we put that one within set. Again, we need more premises. Okay. so. The set function will convert my list into a set object. And after that, we can apply the length function to this set object. So we are no number of unique items and we will print the final result. So now let's write. And now you can see the result is nine. So we have nine unique items. So that is because in this original list, the only two duplicated items so those are the integer one two three all the others are different okay 
So string 1 to 3 are, is different from the integer 1 to 3. Lowercase b is also considered different from uppercase b. And also string false is different from this uh, keyword boolean data false. Okay, and also non data is also different from this string. So these those are all considered different item uh, in Python. All right, 3.6. So we need to define, uh, we need to count, count. So let's first let's print this word. So this is my third Python lab period. Okay, uh, so we have this string and um, the question is asking that can you let Python to count the number of the words in this sentence so we know that is one two three four five six words in this sentence so is there a way that you can do that in Python okay uh, you can pause your video here and try it by your own on yourself and after a few uh, minutes so you can just continue this video all right um hopefully you 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 um, kind of have your own solution but uh you may want to use a length function because that is a function that as we said that the we can consider string we can treat string as sequence of the char characters so uh, if you use length function so it will count the number of the characters in this sentence in this string so if we run it so the the answer is 28 because the length function in this case will count t h i s as separate items it will also count the space okay and also the dot or the period as also an item so that's why we have 28 but the question is asking that so how can we count we want to count the number of the words in this sentence not the number of the characters so is there a way that we can separate those words in this sentence okay so think about that is there any way that we can separate those words into sentences based on space okay hopefully right now you you got <laughs> the solution so yeah the solution is that we will split the sentence first okay so let's remove the length function so to make it easier so if we split the the string by default it was split based on space so if we split this string we will have a list that each single word is an item in this list and once we have this list and now we can use length function okay to this uh to the result of this split method so that we can count the number of the words in this sentence so now if i run it so i got six and um, which is correct okay all right let's move on to 3.7 so for 3.7 we want to define a number list which equals um, actually those are just some random numbers okay um, and the question is asking that can you find out the maximal number and also the minimal number from this uh, list Okay, so if you know that in Python we have the minimal function, okay, which can tell you the minimal items, and we also have the max function that can tell you the maximal item. Okay, but however, for this question, you cannot use those two functions. So you need to think out in another way that based on uh, so the method of the list so can you find out the maximum item or, and also the minimum item okay so you can pause the video here and also try it on your own okay and 
So here is my solution. Again, there are multiple ways to do that. So my solution is that, so this is a list. So one unique, one feature of the list is that the item has an order, okay? So right now it is not sorted. So if I sort the, the list first, and I print the number of the list. Okay, so if I sort the list first and I print this list, so the first item will be the minimal and the last item will be the maximal item. Okay, so once I got that, so how can I get a first item? That is using the index, right? I can just use the zero. Okay, so now I get the minimal item and uh, similarly, so if I want to get the maximum item, I can just use negative one index. So now if I run it, so I get the minimal and also I get this maximum item. Okay, so that is, this, <laughs> this is a very sim easy way that by using sort function, or sort method and use the index, we can find out the minimal number and also maximum number in this number list. All right, and our last question is that we're going to define a game board, which equals a list. So you can pause the video here and also type the list from the instruction. Okay, uh, so here we, we define a game board like this, so zero, zero, zero. And so this is actually a list, okay? And we want to change this one uh, to a game board that is like this. So that is like this. So, okay. So we want to change the game board from this one into this one. Okay. By using the index. Okay. So if we print the game board now, uh, we have the list. And this list is slightly different from our previous ones uh, because this is a nested list. So we want to change this item. Okay, so this is the second item in this list, which itself is the second item of this list. Okay, so how can we access an, an item in this nested list? So it's very easy. So First, we want to get this one, this entire um, row. So that is, uh, so this is the first item that index is zero. This is the second item, index is one. This is the third item, the index is two. So if I put one, so we get the second item in this list, which itself is another list, okay? So now we can treat this list, this uh, this stuff together as a list. So now if we say, okay, so uh, we want to get the second item within this list. So we treat this one together as a list and we type another index. And now if we run it, okay. So we got this item, this zero. So this zero is exactly this item. And we know that the list is mutable so that we can reassign the values within the list in Python. So what we can do is that we can just simply copy this one. We see this item is now equals to one. Okay. And now if we print this game board, let's see where that Okay, here we go. So now we can see this item is now has now been changed to one. Okay, so that is uh, uh, for the number 3.8. All right, so I think we are all done with this lab. So hopefully you this will help you uh, have um, get more familiar with a list and also set in Python. So now let's go back to our terminal. So as always, we did in the previous lab, so we are going to upload this, the change uh, in this lab.
go back to the GitHub repository. So let's run those GitHub commands. So that is git add dash dash all. So we want to make the change to the track. And if you check the git status, so we have one file that's been created. That's commit. And here you can add a few comments that remind you that what we did for this lab. So you can add any comments here. So I just say, OK, so this is my third lab. If you like, you can always use git configure to give the to to store your name and also email. But I'm going to ignore that and just git push. All right, so now it looks like everything has been updated to the GitHub. Uh, remember that we saved our tokens and also username to our local uh, disk. So that's why we didn't need to type those tokens and also username again. So if we check git log, we can see, OK, so that is our third lab. And if we go to our GitHub repository, OK, and we can see that our lab three has been uploaded. OK, that's nice. And for your lab, you can just submit this URL on Canvas.